one, two, three, four, five will make you get down. It's VGC, the video game podcast with me, Jordan Midler, Chris Scullion, and Andy Robinson. This week, VGC turns five and it's time for a party. But first, how we doing, folks? Andy, how are you? Um, I'm all right, I think. Yeah. yeah. How was your Just... lunch? What did you have? Run us down it. I had, um, do you know what? I've discovered Iceland. Oh, the country? Mm, no. That's, <laughs> just a really boring joke. Um, <laughs> It's about as boring as when I walk my Sheba. When you walk a, a Sheba Inu, right, you have to deal with at least five people per walk saying, oh, it looks like a fox. Yes, I know, mate. <laughs> Shut up. Um, no, not the country. Um, Iceland, the shop, has got really good um, frozen protein meals. Oh, really? Like chicken. And mm. Honestly, like game changer, complete game changer. Mm. So for lunch, I just like have some massive chicken skewers. Hell yeah. You bulking yeah. up? You on that protein? You on the gas? No, no, it's just it's better than a pack of crisps and a sandwich, isn't it? <laughs> We're gonna go to yeah, SGF yes, and you're gonna have arms like Hulk Hogan, not getting through security <laughs> with those guns, bro. Um, the have you seen that Iceland has changed, Chris? It's changed its slogan. It's no longer that's why mums go to Iceland. It's now that's why we go to Iceland. Have the wokes taken over, Chris Gallion? Well, usually I would say going to Iceland isn't a, a kind of a group effort. It's, it's only one one person goes to Iceland at a time. Mm. His whole family doesn't need to go to Iceland. Yeah, a whole family on a on a on a weekly food shop sounds like a recipe for a huge argument. I was never allowed to come to Asda when my dad went to the food shop mainly because no. I was a, I was a fat wee boy, so I was probably just going into the chocolate. I was being like, "Oh, just get all this stuffing it in my face," but <laughs> just emptying the aisle. <laughs> <laughs> going up to the big asda yeah. cow do you remember the big asda cow they used to have back when asda had a bit of personality no i don't remember that the, the big you, you'll be too you, you'll be too young to remember the jolly giant that's the only thing i, I remember being at the front of a shop there was a, a toy shop uh, mostly in glasgow maybe parts of northern england called the jolly giant mm. um and it was a brilliant toy shop but when you went in there was an enormous like 30 foot uh giant kind of at the front door wow. staring at you with a big happy face is that where you were getting um, your ninja turtles that's where I got F Zero on the SNES. Mm. I'll have you know, it was at the Jolly Giant. Mm. I was more so, of a yeah. Toy Master man. That's that's now mm. that's now gone. Same as Toys R Us, gone. Although I think Toys R Us is back in like the US and parts of Japan or something. But I'm not entirely sure. I, I think I heard they're bringing it back in an experience form, oh. which sounds atrocious. I love experiences. Speaking of experiences, the most stressful experience of my life, my career at VGC. The website turns five today, May the second. And we thought we would take some time to chat about it. Andy, as Lord Commander, High Overlord of VGC, how are you feeling today? What what is the overwhelming emotion as it turns five? Um uh just uh, you know, stress and pain and <laughs> you know uh, just uh, effort. Um yeah, no, it's it's been a been a long, long hard slog um it's been been fun it's nice to it's nice to look back it's always nice to look back and see the stuff that that we've done and you know like the 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 brilliant opportunities we've had and you know kind of milestones we've hit so it is nice to kind of keep tabs and and talk about these anniversaries um if only for that um yeah it's it's great i mean genuinely when we started the site we didn't know if we'd get this far you know it was like a a how mary in a lot of respects it was let's see if this can happen, I mean, people don't launch, um, you know, kind of quit their jobs and launch websites all that often, especially not these days. Um, yeah. So, you know, it's it's brilliant that it's worked out. And, and certainly if you'd have kind of given me this five years ago, I, you know, would have snapped both your hands off. So, yeah, yeah. brilliant. That's actually the reason I started late. <laughs> like, is, I do remember this well. Andy, Chris didn't before they said... Before they set the website up, no, gen- genuinely before before he set the site up, and I knew the site was coming and stuff. I was like, okay, let's go. Um, and then when he was ready to launch it, he says like, "Are you in?" I was like, "No," because <laughs> I was like, um, at that point, I'd already moved back to Scotland and I was working for the um, the government, like doing like a, a grown up job. You were chancellor of the exchequer. Exactly, I was, and I says, "Well, someone's got to do whatever that guy does." Um, and so, but yeah, I was like. It was to be fair. It was it was a pretty selfish uh, decision because I was basically going to say I'll wait and see how it goes, and if it goes well, I'll jump on. <laughs> and if it dies, yeah, it's, oh, it's kind of right it. now, is it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, because well, the deal was then when it was going all right, and Andy had like freelance budget. I, the deal originally was me to do X number of 
features a, a month or whatever and after like a week I, I was like what am I doing <laughs> like this has to be like the, the full time gig again and then packed the job in and made the jump and here we are yeah good times yeah it's, don't don't launch a website it's, uh, <laughs> it's a pain in the ass because we don't we don't need the competition <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's a it's a pain in the ass um it's a long hard slog um particularly the time where chris wasn't there um you know for for, for you know both good and i mean that like, positively and negatively chris mm-hmm. um because when chris arrived it, he made things a lot easier um at the same time it is that's 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 the one kind of getting through that first 18 months those first two years you're trying to turn you know what uh, savings or investment you have into a into a business that works mm-hmm. and there was no guarantee that that was going to going to happen um and you know kind of thankfully um you know kind of in the piece i put on the website today i thank a, a kind of broad group of people and they do deserve thanking because there are a lot of groups of people that help made this happen you know and they're all re i you know call them readers because they all read bgc um you know they're you know kind of really smart the smartest tier of consumers in my opinion read vgc for their news you know they want no nonsense they want to hear you know kind of broad spectrum of uh, of kind of happenings in the industry but there's a lot of professionals who read vgc we know that you know kind of from our surveys um there's a lot of people in the industry that helped us on day dot there were big publishers who sit down and have lunch with me and open their doors to me before we'd even launched um you know there's every every one of our peers on on kind of other publications who covered our news um and you know kind of cited our reports on day dot um even though we we you know we had, didn't have a reputation or an audience at that point so there's a lot of thank yous to go go around for us getting to this point um and uh yeah because it it, it easily easily could have not happened i mean there's there's countless examples that i'm reminded of where you kind of make you realize and appreciate, you know, the support you have had. Um, mm. I mean, famously, there's a, there's a massive, um, like the, the Call of Duty uh, you, uh, Reddit banned us um, in that first <laughs> year, right? So I did it. I did it exclusive about Warzone. Oh, they're bringing out a battle royale and it's coming out in March. And they literally banned us as a source. Like you can still find the thread somewhere. They put up a whole thing saying, this is absolute nonsense um you know these guys are a fake source i think they cited a tweet i put up where someone asked me who's the source and i said us literally us and they were like they've admitted they've made it up like, no. <laughs> um so just stuff like that do you know what i mean when you've got no reputation that was a big milestone for us um because mm-hmm. there's people i mean we worked we'd worked in the games media for 10 years at, at cbg and then i'd gone and worked in in game development for four or five years after that so there's a large group of people who knew where we were, who we were and opened our doors to us. And we yeah. had a step up for that. It's, it was a lot easier for us um, because of the connections we already had, you know, versus if we were just starting out of, out of university or something. Um, and that was a reminder that, you know, this is the real, you know, what it's like when you don't have that to fall back on those connections that we put a story up that, was, you know, was, was absolutely true, by the way. And, you know, uh, it, it, well sourced. And um, they just ban us on the spot. So who the hell are you guys? Mm. So a lot of a lot of people to thank. Yeah. So things got easier when you brought Chris in. Easier still when you brought me in, yeah? Well, steady on. <laughs> More, work. <laughs> More work. I mean, I think you, you have to, like, if you, if you want to you look back at it, I don't get a lot of opportunities to reflect unless someone talks about it in a pub, which is, is less often than you think. Take it. That's um, your show. It, it, you know, in hindsight, we were so lucky we launched when we did. Um, you know, to put it in perspective, we launched in May 2019, six months before the pandemic, you know, mm. and everything was locked down. And a year, 18 months before the new consoles came out. So that helped us in a multitude of ways, right? First of all, if we'd have launched in December and we didn't have the chance to go to, which we didn't know at the time was the last ever E3, you yeah. know? And go to, to, you know, I traveled everywhere in that six months, giving people your business cards, establishing, you know, who you are, you know, r- reminding them, oh, look, hey, um, think of me. That's important, right? That's a very mm. important part of our job is, um, y- you know, showing your face and networking. 
very important yeah. of every part of, of every job, but especially if you want to be a news journalist, right? I mean, it goes without saying. So that was a gift that we had that six months for it locked down. But then also, you know, we have to, and I appreciate this more now because you speak to people in, in lockdown, you know, oh, I was, I quite enjoyed lockdown, uh, but actually you're being quite ignorant when you say that because you're not appreciating how many people had professions that were absolutely decimated. You know, like I speak, I speak to my barber about it and, and, mm. you know, until he pointed out, well, it might've been good for you, mate, but I couldn't do any work. You know, I'm self-employed yeah. and no one looked after me. So we're super, super fortunate as well that like everyone in the, in the games media and everyone in the games industry that, video games kind of exploded in lockdown because that's all anyone could do. I mean, we remember all those big hits of that year, Animal Crossing and Final Fantasy VII Remake and, and Warzone. And then the new consoles came out and it was kind of like, it was up to that point where it's like, we have a business and we haven't really looked back. It's been yeah. just like for everyone in and around the games industry, it's probably been a little bit tougher after that point because what happens is that things settle and, um you, you know budgets kind of go back to what they were before sales go back to what they were before and also i think one of the things that i do really begrudge i don't know if begrudge is the right word but obviously physical events have never really come back to what they yeah. were before i yeah. mean obviously the most notable being e3 and i and that's a real shame because that's one of the reasons that you know we do our job is that we go to those events we come back with 20 interviews you know, yeah. with with uh, in a lot of cases with his exec executives and stuff, whereas the pandemic kind of taught supercharged uh, or, or, or or probably again the wrong word like kind of pushed pushed forward a, a lot uh, it, uh, these um, kind of uh, moves into digital. So now increasingly, I mean that year twenty 2020, twenty 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 one, everyone remembers how shit those digital conferences were, right? <laughs> yeah. There was about three a month, and they were all crap, right? They couldn't, the content couldn't justify the, um, you know, the, the shows themselves. Yeah. But what happened was, is it meant that companies could hide behind their screens. There was no accountability, no transparency. No one was playing these games. There's tons mm -hmm. of examples of games that came out in 2021 that were a bit shit. And they kind of came out of nowhere. I mean, like, I think Cyberpunk was the year before, but you got Battlefield 2043. Is it 2043 or 42? one of those a battlefield yeah. game that was really poor at launch i mean halo was uh i liked halo but some would say you know certainly when it was gearing first time around and it was delayed a year that that had come out of nowhere people didn't get to play those games because they didn't have mm. to they had the perfect excuse right you weren't talking yeah. to you weren't given access to any of the these companies and when these companies are showing their making their announcements in front of a, a live stream chat rather than in front of a live audience, you don't get that feedback, right? There's, there's not as much mm -hmm. pressure for them to put on a good show, you know, to, to yeah. tell us, you know, all the things that we want to know. Because, you know, if, if you do that E3, it's embarrassing. You, you're getting boost. I've yeah. got off on a massive tangent here, by the way. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm well, I'm well I'm aware. Good. But uh, I'm yeah, I don't think that that really came back. So, you know, there was less releases in, you know, one less so like o2 as well and then you're looking at it again now it's really like i mean what everyone was saying or the, the you know kind of the, the studio leaders and the publisher bosses were saying during the pandemic that this is going to catch up with us you know the real i remember phil spencer saying the real games affected by the pandemic are the ones coming out in the future not the ones coming out now yeah and you, we've been feeling that like the last couple of years other than last year when we had a it was an amazing year last year you know you're where the, the industry is suffering for it now in the there's less a fewer big games you know everyone's there's a absolutely a, you know kind of disgraceful wave of um you know kind of redundancies and layoffs hitting the industry um as they try and kind of um adjust their graphs to to continue from the 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 unrealistic you know kind of pandemic spike mm. but you know we we all we, we've kind of loved covering the games beat um you know as i say in the piece all a lot of the best um, kind of games uh, people work in the games media they don't stick around particularly long because other more lucrative professions with you know kind of better career progression come along um, and they understandably kind of take that up but we love covering the games beat we've loved doing it for the last couple of years and kind of long may we be allowed to to do that you'll have yeah, to yeah, pry me out of this chair with <laughs> some force um just to to inform people who might not know how I got involved when I was at the BBC and I was. We don't reviewing... want to hear your story. 
Everyone yeah, wants yeah. to hear my story. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Andy. Um, that's, see, this is a perfect example. When I was uh, re- when I was reviewing at the BBC, I had a PS5. Andy made a call out on Twitter being like, any freelancer's got a PS5? Because obviously no one had one. I say, hey, mate, I've got a PS5. I have no and idea how you had a PS5. Because I reviewed things for the BBC, mate. I was I was the Queen's personal game reviewer. Um, they didn't they didn't get past the first two letters. Like P, B, <laughs> oh, you go on then. Here you go. Yeah, but, <laughs> honestly, it was literally like that. When I when I got my Xbox Series X got shipped overnight for Seattle, it was still stinking of weed by the time it got here. Um, I, I, I reviewed Demon Souls for Andy, and then soon after, I reviewed that year's Call of Duty. However, in a uh, mix-up that would become emblematic of our relationship going forward, Andy asked if I could review the multiplayer, meaning, are you prepared to also review the multiplayer? Have you played enough of it? I took this as, can you write a review of the multiplayer? So I struggled to try and get a thousand words out of the shit Call of Duty multiplayer, like, oh, the guns are so loud, man, and then I submitted it, and he was like, where's the campaign? I was like, oh, fuck, here we go. And that was four years ago. And now I don't, I don't remember that at all. <laughs> <laughs> I think about that all the time. I it remember just gets, just gets lost in the the Groundhog Day that is, <laughs> you know, a year in the games media. Like, ah, yeah. oh, this ruining this Call of Duty game. I can't remember anyone reviewing a Call of Duty game. <laughs> that that to me that is I was thinking about this the other day. The hardest question in any video game trivia would be name the Call of Duty games in order. I could get to about like, 2010 and then it flies away from me. Yeah, when just, they, when they just, started coming out with all sorts of nonsense ones uh, around yeah. the, the kind of PS3, PS4 era. When yeah, Zampella yeah. fucked off, that's like the end of my knowledge of Call of Duty. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's been yeah. it's been fun. It's just to 50 more years um, doing things like this. Chris, I teased you on the pre-show. I've got a drink review, folks. He's ready. Um, for oh, a special yeah. occasion, I have a special drink. Bang. I've got a can bang. of Bang Candy is Apple bang? Crisp. Is this, is this still an energy drink, though, eh? This is still an energy drink, yeah. Let's see. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> it tastes like... Do you remember brain liquors? I don't, see, I don't know why you say remember, because you can still get them. It was essentially no, little... Was after my time. Little plastic tubes of pure you After your time, or after your, like, drinking beverages... Talk. No, after I'm sitting by brain liquors, I'm assuming he's talking about a sweet. Is a wee, is a wee sweet? Uh, must be after the days I went to sweet shops. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, Chris, you still go to sweet shops. It's like a little <laughs> plastic tube with a plastic ball on top of it, and you lick the right. ball, and as the ball rotates, the sour stuff goes on the ball, and thus the ball okay. becomes like sour. So it's like you're licking a brain. Um, right. It tastes like that. The the VGC maniacs know what I'm talking about. It's okay. It's sugar free. <laughs> Um, it doesn't have any of the ridiculous, uh, any of the dr- ridiculous like monster reserve. That's one's for the anarchists, all that kind of oh, crap. Yeah, yeah. But um, I rate See, it. I respect that. I respect that. It just tells you, but it presumably just tells you the ingredients, and that's it. <laughs> Must be used within the framework of a healthy lifestyle, and not used as substitutes for a varied and balanced diet. Well, that's me fucked. Then I'm afraid. Um, for sure. This is my breakfast and my lunch. <laughs> Bang! Proud sponsors of VGC, the video game podcast. Crash, you drinking anything good? Uh, no, I'm just on my 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 Amber Extra. Although although they've they've turned it into a wee can because they've turned it into a kind of pro Scotland Euros oh, um, thing typical. now, which is which they always used to do. Um, so I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I, I I should also point out I'm also celebrating my 18th anniversary of uh, being a game journalist as well. So your what by anniversary? Coincidence. 18th. 18th. Yeah, second of May two thousand six, I joined the Fishing Dinner. You started magazine. at Futures shortly after me, right? Yeah, d- yeah. Just I remember. You. I remember they like they cleared the area of the office for you guys because um, just we, for me because we acquired <laughs> Future acquired um, a Fishing Nintendo mag from EMAP, right? EMAP, yep. So they like closed the earlier one and then did the new one when Nintendo were like, "Oh, we want it to be like Edge." <laughs> that was the thing because I I thought I was saying I thought I was applying for. The existing official Nintendo magazine, and you were gutted, and 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 they were they were like, do you want to, um, do you want to apply for this? Is that yeah, okay, now okay, uh, the, the the interviews on didn't they, they didn't bring, I bring a, a copy a of issue one? Didn't I ring a bell? That but, didn't they not? I thought they didn't tell people what they were interviewing for. 
No, well, they told me. Well, but, that but might they, be but, a different uh, magazine where they come I don't in know, and they well, go, oh, yeah, we'd I'd, like to write for the uh, official Xbox One magazine it, or something. It may be different. I, when I, I initially applied for Games Radar, shortly after it had been renamed from Daily Radar, it became Games Radar, and they asked if I wanted, I, I'd applied for that first and didn't get it. And they said, you want to apply for Official Nintendo magazine in London instead? I says, okay. And they said, okay, buy issue one. And I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> buy issue one. Then not realizing that it had changed hands at that point because mm-hmm. issue one had literally just come out. And I saw issue one. I'm like, this is actually significantly better than I expected. Because like, I, I loved, issue I loved one doing the, the massive error in it that got them like reprimanded by Nintendo. That, that's the one thing I would say because people always say, oh, oh, official magazine, you must have been in Nintendo's back pocket. Literally the only thing, the only time we interacted with Nintendo every month was to have them approve the news section. And that's because in issue one, <laughs> someone who we won't mention, but we I mean, Andy, I think both know who it was, um, falsely put in a caption that said the Wii's dock was a charging station that also charged the Wii, which made no sense. Because <laughs> <laughs> And Nintendo were raging. They're like, that's this is made up. So from that point till the magazine ended, we had to submit the news sections just for accuracy. But that was terrible because they didn't get British humour. And we'd always mm. put try and put jokes in the news section and then say, no, like one of them was um, for when the Wii launched, uh, somewhere in Japan or somewhere, um, loads of all the staff in, in one shop were dressed up as Mario and they were like handing a, a Wii over to someone. And we put in a caption saying, um, Mario outfits are uh, regulation like in, in shops in Japan. And Nintendo replied and said, That's not true. <laughs> can take out that we know it's not true. I can take that out, please. They went to take that out. Oh. <laughs> so, you, can, you can always count so on Nintendo humorless. to have a, a, a good sense of humor that you know, so humorless, so self effacing. <laughs> Yeah, but no, good times, uh, 18 years. 2006. So, Do you know what I was doing in mm-hmm. 2006, Chris? Oh, probably breaking out your crib. <laughs> <laughs> Swimming out your da. <laughs> <laughs> what were you doing in 2006? I was in primary six. Um, I, I hadn't even left primary school yet. I was, That's poor. Yeah. I was probably... Poor. I, was re- I was reading a lot of games magazines at that time. I used to read them until they were absolutely falling apart um just in case they had any news about a new wrestling game because that's all i cared about <laughs> <laughs> it felt like every single magazine had stuff about wrestling games in it at that time it was great um wrestling game led to one of the most awkward com- uh, instances in my life when i went to japan to do to see the new what was the first wii uh wwe game mm-hmm. Um, and this was early days of the Wii, so they were, they were just pushing the remote motion controls the entire time. And they made us sit and watch um, the game being played on Wii for the first time. And all the taunts you had to use the Wii remote to do. So if you wanted to be John Cena, you had to move the remote of your face. Mm-hmm, and good. if you wanted to be DX, like the crotch chop, you had to wave the remote and the nunchuck like that. Uh-huh. And every time they did a taunt, they would turn to us, sit and watching, and do it to us. So we could see what they were doing. <laughs> so they'd stand and turn and play play it on on the TV, and every now and then, like one of the developers would turn around and go like that, and do like a DX crotch shop like in front of us, and we'd all go, ah, yep, <laughs> turn around, and just keep doing it over and over did again. They tell you so to awful. suck it in Japanese. They did. That that was when it turned sour. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was yeah, good times. Oh, what I like this is it's great. That yeah. kind of energy. I feel like VGC is the only website that still maintains that kind of like funny mid two thousands games energy, and that's why no, I love working not, here. That's not fair. That's not fair. On the, on the every, podcast, every other game site Slack is full of tomfoolery. <laughs> no, I know, <laughs> but I feel like it's very much particularly fun. We're just jaded. <laughs> but I think that's very much part of the. I think the, the podcast did a lot of heavy lifting. The podcast yeah. did a lot of heavy lifting in the fun stakes. Yeah, I, I forget that unlike me people don't spend 20 hours a day talking to you so they don't get the full experience um i'm i'm before... not seen as a man of fun i, th- I think that's unfair uh, i think you're quite funny yeah it's underplaying uh, yeah just wait till yeah. your stand-up set at netflix has a laugh festival all right mate <laughs> i couldn't get into west ham for 30 minutes what's that all about um that's Keep all i rolling. think about when i think of your twitter before we go for a break <laughs> west ham i have you not seen how every weekend the West Ham ticketing office fucks up in some way and Andy's like, I'm standing here on London Bridge, I'm in Manchester, the, the, the queues are so long, the game kicked off an hour ago, what am I supposed to do? I, I've been a season holder for about uh, 15 years 
I'm pretty sure I've tweeted that twice. <laughs> the character assassination on 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 our fifth birthday. It's just outrageous. <laughs> oh, okay. Before we go for a break, we have a, very, a, a brief bit of news before we come back with news, because we talked about VGC for four hours. Um, Xbox has confirmed their showcase for June 9th. It will be followed by a redacted Direct that everyone pretty much knows as Call of Duty, because they put the Activision logo on the, the, the thing that they tried to redact. Um, from the actual show, Andy, what we expect in Indiana Jones dates, things like that. Mo- is it going to be stuff that's quite close or far away? How are they going to line up? Um, well, I um, I don't know if you read the report on the Verge. They did similarly afterwards. That's pretty much what I heard. What mm. what um, they put in there, um, you know, kind of the lineup for this year is what Indiana Jones, uh, Flight Simulator, Avowed is that this year? Yeah, Avowed. I'm sure I've missed one. Um, we'll see Hellblade's coming up pretty soon. Um, they're gonna they're gonna push Call of Duty. Um, you know, to make the point this year that it's under the umbrella. You can see that by the fact that they're doing a showcase and and. They'll they'll do some 2025 stuff as well, yeah. Um, but the rumblings are still there that you know, like their the strategy these days, and it's being reinforced with every um, kind of uh, you know kind of sales sales charts that come out of the US and everywhere else. Um, but obviously, mostly Sakana um, is kind of really you know kind of enforcing that the strategy they seem to be going down is the right one. Um, that. You need to put more games on more devices. Um, yep. You know, the biggest game of the year by far is uh, Helldivers. You know, PC, PS5 game. It'd be even bigger if it was on Xbox. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Power World, biggest Xbox game of the year by far. I think you're going to see them talking about more games coming to uh, to PlayStation and elsewhere. Um, yeah. I, I really do. I, I imagine I, my guess would be there's not much off off limits. And that is the... That's reality we're in now. It's not just for Xbox as well. You know, you're you're seeing what everyone's going through at the moment in the industry, <clears throat> trying to find in consoles, trying to find growth where they can get it. That's why they're all jumping on live service games, etc., and mobile yeah. games, and trying to grow the, the this audience that has essentially been the same for 20, 30 years to mm. get any kind of growth they can because their budget's going up, but the audiences are not growing. Console audience. Yeah. Um, so the way you do that is you put your games as many places you can. And I, I expect Sony to do that. I don't think they'll take the lead. I think they'll um, wait for Xbox to do it. Because of course, what? why do you need to have PlayStation exclusives in a world where you have no competitors that have their own, right? Just deck waving in it. It's just to say, look at this, look at what we have. But well, I'm, sure I'm, I'm positive that they'll still exist, but at the same time, there's really not so much pressure yeah. there. When that happens, um, I don't think it's necessarily. I'm going off on a tangent again. Sorry, it's not necessarily <laughs> great for consumers, right? Because competition's good for everyone. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, because again, if another thing, if you're PlayStation and Microsoft, just sort of going, oh, we're not going to play the traditional game and you know uh, go and do the console war thing, then they kind of don't have to fight so hard to push their own stuff. Yeah. It's just yeah. the, the new world now. We're all in a in a PC world, except some of our PCs are boxes with PlayStation written on them. We all yeah. live in a PC world. Chris, if they get all of this stuff out this year, that's their best lineup in 10 years, in my opinion. What do you think? Yeah, probably. Um, it, I mean, a lot of it, re- re- it, it depends on the quality of what they bring out. Like, Indiana Jones has got Indiana, to be good, man. It just has I know, to but be. there's no guarantee. There's no guarantee. Yeah. Like, oh, that game's going to be banging. I, I, the people who I'm, 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 I'm 95% certain it will be. It's Machine Games, always... right? Yeah, but but like good good um, good friend of mine is um, is working on it as well. Um, Harrison Ford, the guy, the guy who died, <laughs> the snake. He's the director <laughs> of um, the Darkness and Chronicles Riddick. So the darkness if I was, if I was describing game. to you a first person action like an adventure game, those are two of the best of like the last twenty years. He yeah. he knows what he's doing. They love Indiana Jones. Uh, Todd Howard loves Indiana Jones. That game is going to be a banger, guaranteed. I love that in the darkness you could sit in your living room in the game with his girlfriend and, and watch the telly, and there was like full movies on TV, and you could literally spend like three hours just watching the telly and it was different for the whole time 
Mm. That was fantastic. That's back um, when games were games. I think so, exactly. The good old days. Um, yeah, I think it'll be fine. I, I don't expect Fable or anything like that. Um, I, I think Flight Simulator is going to be a dark horse. I think that's... Um, the, the fact it's a flight simulator game, but with purpose. Yeah. Like actually having jobs in it, I think is going it, to. Can I break it be... through from that level of the enthusiast? To because I think I like... love flight simulator, but after a while in flight simulator, you, you basically go, all right, I want to fly from Edinburgh to London. And then you do that and you say, okay, done. I love, I love speaking we're, to we're the developer next. as well. I think they're, they're really like passionate oh, guys yeah. who are, are yeah, fun to they, speak they, to. They're, they're clearly, and, and so the fact that now there's, there's actually going to be a purpose and there's all these different jobs you can do, it basically turns it into a realistic pilot wings. Um, and so I'm well up for that. That, um, that flight simulator trip I went on for the 40th anniversary was one of the best ones I've ever been on specifically because of that. Cause those guys, you asked them like one question and they talked for like 15 minutes and you could see because mm. we're in a big uh like air and space museum so we're just walking about going like we should probably put that in the game we should we, we think we could get that in the game it's like it's refreshing how kind of open and excited they were about stuff um but yeah i really like flight sim it's it's huge on tiktok like there's so mm-hmm. many videos of like i tried to fly all of these celebrities private jets off you know how in like Saudi Arabia they have those uh, big skyscrapers that have helipads on top of them? Like mm. they'll put the private jet on those and try and like take off off of it. And those videos get like millions and millions of likes. And I sit there and I'm like, hmm, could Drake's private jet take off the top of the Burj Khalifa? Hmm, this is interesting. Everyone so, who played Flight Simulator as well flew over their house to see it, it and crashed into it. Yeah. And got annoyed. That Literally, was, first thing was, I did after downloading <laughs> fifty hundred gigs of the game, and then you just fly to your house, see that it's a bit of a disappointing brown smudge in suburbia, <laughs> and then turn the game off. Yeah, fly, fly, fly right in there, and then it, it, so I call the other times like, "Oh, look, it's beautiful. You can fly over like the vistas of Vienna." And uh, no, I'm just going to go and find my house in East London. <laughs> Is it, it, it? You knew right away it was going to be problematic when they said, "Oh, and, and all the all the uh, the landscapes are generated by Bing Maps." You're like, are, are they though? <laughs> Come on, <laughs> yeah, of, of all the things, I get I get the Microsoft connection, but mate, I got a Bing lot more Maps. appreciation of uh, London City Airport after that. It's a small runway. Yeah. I tried to land right, and like I just sort of bounced off it. Like, <laughs> it was like London yeah, the I'm going back up. <laughs> <laughs> Crash through into the Pokemon World Championships while you're there. <laughs> um the the way that they handled like uh like blocks of flats in the original uh release of uh, xbox flight sim was funny it like often substituted them for skyscrapers so at the end of my road in paisley there's two blocks of flats and it looked as if <laughs> you had like the shard at the end of <laughs> this, this, this tiny road in paisley and i thought like, hmm. Uh, perhaps not people get stabbed in there that's not the shit well that's a shard in some ways yeah, yeah i think this will be It'll be an interesting show. They've got a lot to talk about. Um, they've got to show that Starfield DLC. I think they'll have to handle the COD thing weirdly because obviously a lot of people, a lot of like hardcore well, that's, that's game why, fans, that's why they aren't separated, into COD. Right? They, yeah. They'll just sort of like say, "Yeah, Activision, go and do this." Because you notice how there's no Bethesda showcase this year, so yeah. they're mm. just easing you in. Like they're 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 um, you know, they they're sweetening you up. Oh, it's the Bethesda showcase. Yeah, Bethesda. Yeah. Anyway, you're all made redundant now, and we're going to announce <laughs> your games in our showcase yeah, now that yeah. we've warmed it up. So they'll have a, they're flirting at the moment. There was some pretense. Until I wish it was an Call actual Games Activision. Already, but... I wish it was an actual Activision showcase, and not just Call of Duty. So we could have maybe seen like Activision don't have any other games. Tony Hawk, Guitar Hero. <laughs> Chris, help me out with Activision games here. Um, uh, uh, a pitfall. Pitfall. That's exa- that is literally the game I was thinking about. <laughs> I was like, what's the, Zox what's the Revenge? Wee, what's the wee swinging guy that you can play in Call of Duty? What's the wee pit, swinging you know, guy I can't believe the disrespect for Pitfall Harry. Yeah, um, Pitfall Harry. Uh, um, True Crime. Oh, yeah, yeah. that would bring that back. The, the one with Snoop Dogg in it. Mm. What were, he, he was in the sequel, wasn't he? Streets of LA. True Crime Streets of LA, and there was also Streets of New York, was there? What was the one that got cancelled? There's the third one, one that got cancelled, and did it, did it, did it not become uh, Sleeping Dogs? True Crime Hong Kong. The one that became the one that was um, Sleeping Dogs. Sleeping Dogs. Yeah. Yeah. Sleeping dogs. They yeah. asked for my, um, they approved, I approved a quote for the back of the box. <laughs> when it was Hong Kong? Or what, and then, or I, and then was... I wrote five previews for, yeah, they took me, they flew me to Canada to see the game. 
Mm. Um, and it was a brilliant, absolutely brilliant off as well. They were a brilliant dev team. They were. Um, they used, they made Mod Nation races as well. Oh, that's can't a cool game. Their name can't remember their name. So they did the Little Big Planet one as well. But I'm I'm really annoyed that I can't remember their name. So fantastic developer mm-hmm. in uh, Vancouver. Um, super talented people. Um, saw the game. Wrote up four or five previews for the future mags, official Xbox, official PlayStation, you know, like PC Gamer, all them. Went to print. They asked for a quote for the back of the box. Yeah. And then it was cancelled in their uh, financial results for the mags were out. <laughs> Jesus, man. United Front Absolutely. Games, that was. I said United Front Games. Yeah, they're yeah. really cool. I just, got the, most, I just got the most passive aggressive Japanese um, email ever. Go on so then, I'm, before I'm we going, go to break. <laughs> so I'm going on vacation. I'm going on vacation with my family, right? And we're going, mm-hmm. there's a, a beach town where they have like summer fireworks and stuff. So I've mm-hmm. asked like you know, on Expedia, like, you know, you kind of send messages for Expedia. I was like, mm-hmm. can we have a, um, a sea view, right? Because that's where the fireworks are. <laughs> so I had to wait <laughs> a day and a half. And I just got a reply that just said, the room is garden view. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. The so room is garden of you. That's me. It's, it's, that's simple that's as me that. told. Yeah, no. yeah. Thanks for your help. I had a similar thing <laughs> recently when I, went to, when I went to London for a trip. I checked in at this hotel and they were like, um, so as far as a room, would you like uh, a high floor, or a low floor? And I was like, the high floor is fine. And then she goes, so we only have the first floor. This was like a 25 floor <laughs> hotel. I was like, why do you even ask? <laughs> it's like, okay, did, that's genuinely, fine. like, what is, why is that a thing? Yeah. Like when you usually when you're in places like that, like okay, if you're staying in a five story building, mm. high fl- yeah, that's a bit better, right? You're gonna make a difference. You might have a view. If you're yeah. staying in like a thirty floor building, is it really? Do you really? Like, is it? Oh, I don't Depends know. where you are, I suppose, doesn't it? Like if like if it's in Japan or something, then yeah, you want to go as high as you can to get like a proper view of everything. But a lot this of them like I don't care. <laughs> uh, you're like I, I don't think it's most care. most hotels in big skyscrapers. Are only occupy the top anyway like the yeah. bottom is mm. usually retail or offices and stuff That's like right. that for that reason yeah the unnamed place that we are visiting in la i was looking at there's like three hotels in this building and yeah, our hotel three, only like, occupies hotels. like like one bit of it yeah mm. the unnamed unnamed hotel we're in that we definitely won't share the unnamed hotel <laughs> inside the hollywood sign i'm staying in the o and he's staying in the l We'll see you there. You are an O. Right. <laughs> so what's the next story? The next story is going for a break. We'll be back Sp- after this. <laughs> and we are back. We wanted to have a fun chat this week, but unfortunately news broke that is bigger than that. According to Bloomberg, Take-Two has reportedly decided to close Roll7 and Intercept Games. You may know them from Kerbal Space Program as well as Roller Drome. This is Garden insane. View. <laughs> this is it's a, it's a Garden View decision. Still, yeah. free, man. <laughs> I'm. I can't believe this. This is a year after they won the uh, uh, Roll Seven, won the BAFTA for British, yeah, best it's, British it's, game. It's, 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 like, it's disgraceful, right? It's yeah. uh, let's let's call it out for what it is. It's uh, the people who made this decision should be ashamed. You know, though I suspect that the, the fact that they're in that job, you know, it, it, it indicates that they probably don't have any. Um, you know, you kind of is a pre- prerequisite of being able to do that job that yeah. you can lay off an entire studio of award winning games. You know, just as you to your point, just this time last year, won the best British game at the BAFTAs or was it was last year or the year before. It's, it's ridiculous. I mean, I'd like to assume that they've explored opportunities of it is anyone going to buy them you know and you know it's possible in this climate though i'd be amazed if if no one was interested in kind of taking them public yeah um not public but for, uh, private sorry um you know the only the only um the only uh consolation i can take is that you know you you gotta you gotta believe and hope that even in this climate that those guys can go and start a new business because they're they've proven that they make genuine um you know kind of smaller game of the year contenders they've been fantastic for a number of years um you know i i, I really feel for them i i think what's going on in the games industry at the moment it's it's not just about games it's about you know 
capitalism as a whole, how it's out of control, how the graph always has to go up, not just up, yeah. but up on last year. I mean, Take Two just spent how much did they spend on Gearbox? Four hundred over four hundred yeah. million dollars. Yeah. They're about right? to launch GTA Six. Yeah, like their, their CEO just got a bonus of. I'm sure it was like it, it, you're talking like over ten mil, like twenty, thirty, forty mil. It was a lot yeah. of money, basically. Just paid. He's just been paid out that bonus. That could pay for those studio studios for several years. Yeah, you know, not just those guys, right? A lot's been made of Roll Seven as well, but the um, Cable Space Program guys, they were an external studio working mm -hmm. on that game. And this is all very alleged, alleged before uh, I'm I'm arrested. Um, <laughs> out of the blue, a lot of the staff at that independent studio started joining 2K to start a new studio that ended up taking over development of the game. Mm -hmm. Then they made the game and now they've shut them. <laughs> Mm. Is <laughs> if it wasn't like real life, you would say it was made up, right? This is Bond yeah, yeah. villain shit. It's it, it, and again, I don't think it's unique to games. It's it's you know unchecked capitalism. It's it's out of control. It's uh, venture capital money is uh, a huge reason for this. The, the venture capital money is coming home to to roost. I think um, I remember um, having a meeting with Peter Molyneux at GDC probably 10-ish years ago um when maybe a little bit long earlier than that actually when the indie thing was really in full swing because obviously xbox live arcade started on consoles and then and then ios you know kind of turbocharged that and we were and by the time we got to ps4 era indie games were they used something using indie games to sell its console yeah and i remember speaking to people on you about the indie boom and how you know did it remind him of back in the day when you know uh, uh, you know kind of spectrum 80s days when that's how they started they made games in their bedrooms and he said he specifically said no the difference is is all the venture capital money he said go down to the hotel lobby and have a look at all the people around in suits having meetings these developers are being offered blank checks mm -hmm. and at some point that's going to go south he said they're going to come home they're going to come back for their money the first sign of trouble yeah. And, you know, here we are. I mean, I just did a story a couple of weeks ago um, about former Lionhead guys. Successful studio. They've been going for a number of years. they got 30 guys. They've had to lay off 60% of the studio because their publishers just dropped their deal out of the blue. Yeah. Um, said we, and, and they had met with 30 plus publishers and the same ones that were interested 18 months ago are now saying we're not signing these types of games. The The, yeah. the bar the bar is raised for re requirements. Having a good team and a good game is no longer good enough. They need yeah. to see Discord community, wish lists, that sort of thing. And that's why I say you have to hope rather than uh, 18 months ago, I would have said it's a certainty that Roll7 are just going to go and make their own own studio. But you don't know anymore because, uh, again, like, it's very clear, like in terms of securing a pub show, it's securing investment, having a good team and a good uh, uh, game it's not good enough right now. And that's really sad. It doesn't, I don't think it reflects at all. Um, you know, what, what consumers want. It's, yeah. uh, it's really, really sad time. Uh, it really is. And, you know, I've said this on a, it, we, you know, I've seen other podcasts saying it as well. It's sometimes difficult to feel enthusiastic mm. this year with everything that's going on. Yeah. Um, it also puts people I, I, in the context of this, this, it's always sad when this happens, but there's yeah. really a rage associated with this when it is the company that has Grand Theft Auto that is about to have another Grand Theft Auto. They've already made the biggest entertainment media property of all time. Like, mm -hmm. it's it just. I mean, it also puts paid to the to the to the argument. I take no pleasure in saying this, but we we in the past I, I've been told when I've given a game like a negative review. And you realise that when you give a game a bad review, you're you're now the the way the industry is. You're now um, like sentencing these people to potential job losses, and it's like, well, now this just proves that even positive reviews, like, are no guarantee of job security. Yeah, that's always that's always a nonsense. That's yeah, always a nonsense, it's, right? It's it's, it's, it's really yeah. simple. They need the graph to go up for their shareholders every year. Um, you know, being profitable is not enough. They need yeah. to be more profitable, which yeah. is unsustainable and ridiculous. And mm. the easiest way to do that in the short term is to lay off your staff. Yeah, You know, just, I, I've not yeah. looked at um, Take-Two's share price, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's gone up. 
I mean, mm. Square Enix's share price went up after they announced the other day they've cancelled a ton of ton of projects. Great, went up. Yeah, because it means we're probably going to get a payout in the short term. It's um, if it, it, yeah, I'll be curious to see what happened. What what the 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 kind of such what the what the scene looks like in three to four years time because you've got to imagine from now on studios will be saying we need to lower these budgets and we need to but at the same time a lot of the the game playing public don't understand the, yeah. the, those kind of mechanics and why they are expect, my games getting shorter? they expect why to see games looking better and getting bigger and and yeah. when it comes to the point where studios are going to start saying no you know we need to start making them smaller we need to start reducing um, some of the obscene money we're spending on these games, I th- there's going to be some backlash from the community. Like, so there's going to be this interest in in a few years' time. How far will these games have come down in budget and in size? Um, which I'm all for, to be honest. If it keeps studios uh, like going, and if it gives you a chance to play more games, especially if games are, are arriving on Game Pass and PS Plus. Um, there's no need for these games to be. Yeah, I to mean, I think we, we, I think we might be talking about two different things. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, Roll Seven were making smaller games anyway. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, you know, on that front, that's something that's needed to happen for a long time, right? We've been mm-hmm. saying that games are too long, they're too big, they're ticking boxes yeah, yeah. to justify their price tags. Um, I think you know, it's not necessarily reflective of quality at all. Show me a game that's. Uh, I challenge you. Show me a game that would be worse, um, you know, from the last 10 years if it was a third shorter. Um, mm. I, you know, honestly, like one of my last of us part two, right? I love that game, it's too long, yeah, mm-hmm. could be half as long, right? Yeah, you could apply that to most triple A games, you know, from the last 10 years, you really could. Um, and you'd be getting more of them, and people's jobs would be more secure, um, you know, and they'd probably be they would be better. Because these games yeah. are being expanded by, you know, fluff. They're mm-hmm. being made by tons of studios, some of them that are just there to make arbitrary tower defense mini games to artificially extend, you know, the game. I it's, mean, people uh, called Spider Man 2 too short. That's like a 30 hour game. Yeah, that's fuck like, off. <laughs> it's like, come on. Like, yeah. What I mean, do you these, want? This, 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 people know from the stats, right? The, the majority of players don't finish these games. Yeah, they not don't. Even close. Right, it's it's always it's a optics thing, right? When you say shorter game, we want to make our game shorter, blah blah. blah. It's like what you know, you're robbing. Yeah. I mean, to, to be fair, like a lot of gamers, a uh, 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 um, uh, gamers hate that word, but people the, the gaming kind of um, communities have been kind of fleeced in the past with microtransactions and charging them for pre-owned games and like annual sequels and stuff like that. They have been mm-hmm. right. But that's not this, right? That's not this. So a lot of the community have got their backs up whenever, you know, kind of this terminology comes out. But they're not talking about giving you a worse product for the same price, right? Yeah. They're talking about giving you a better product, in my opinion, because you're not, you don't, we don't need this stuff. Like, I mean, you're at the point now where obviously a lot of people are talking about Fallout because of the, the, the brilliant um, Amazon series, that we're probably not going to see another Fallout game for the next 10 years. Right, yeah, because that's how long they take to make. It's if you want another Fallout, you're gonna have to accept that we can't make games can't keep getting bigger, more detailed. You know, with that level of fidelity, they yeah. because it's unsustainable. Yeah, it is okay. Um, I should just flag that I just got an alarm to pick my daughter up in five minutes. So if we can't solve the games industry in the, within the next five minutes, I suggest we put a pin in it and try and fix it Chris, at a later date. Chris, I've got something for you. For the next five minutes. Here we go. Are you ready to rock, Chris Gillian? I've because always been ready week, to rock. I got the Riff Master. Can you see how smudged it already is with the fingerprints? Pish master. The Pesh Master. Do you know <laughs> how many Guitar Hero and DJ Hero controllers I've just got in the loft? <laughs> they they are, my loft a- is full Andy. of them. Some of which are new. Yeah. You two are idiots. They are worth a lot of money. I'm not even no, I'm joking. Keeping them, I'm keeping them for, for when my, my, if my finger ever heals from my, <laughs> my garden accident, which it never will. Um, the, the Guitar Hero 2 Xbox 360 controller it remains the best. The, the Flying one. V? Yeah. Uh, um, oh, oh, no, no, that's the, white, that's the, the Exploder. One. That's the Exploder. Um, yeah. You're wrong. The best uh, music game guitar is the Rock Band 2 Stratocaster, but um, I, 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 respect, I respect the the choice. Speaking of which, 
uh, my wonderful segue this is the pdp riff master released um in collaboration with fortnite festival presumably um i played a bit of fortnite festival it's uh, impenetrable garbage basically in order to play fortnite festival you have to load into like a game of fortnite essentially and then find fortnite festival like it's roblox or something it's like hidden miles away and then you have to run about as your character go up to this dj and say i want to play these four songs and you know how chris and rock band if you're playing a song and you're like oh the collaboration the calibrations about off or something you can just pause calibrate and go right yeah. back into it and um, in fortnite festival you have to leave the lobby go right back to the start load through everything again and your playlist is gone it's mm. a maddening experience and um, that yeah. being said the guitar controller also works with rock band 4 and it's great uh do you know what else it works with chris go on <laughs> it works with a little piece of freeware that i've been hesitant to mention you've mentioned on once show. once or one or two hundred times before <clears throat> I, I won't mention what you can do with this freeware but there's a bit of freeware called clone hero uh, floating about and it yeah. works perfectly okay. perfectly <laughs> Well, this is how i know the v- this is how i know the vgc podcast army is strong because as soon as i posted this on twitter the amount of people that applied to me going clone hero clone hero is astronomical they can try and take me down but they'll never succeed we shall not be moved but yeah pdp rough master i think it's like 100 quid 150 quid if Scandalous. you're needing one if you're needing one of these guitars it's, it's a really good one that's basically my review of it um is better quality than any of the ones that they made with the games. I'll say. I'm sure the full rock band set used to cost 150 or something back in the day. No, it was 200 because I got it. I suppose you got a game Regardless. and you got drums. Yeah. Yeah. Scandal. This is for enthusiasts, Chris. It's for. Forget. Listen to that. Come on. That's. Yeah, I'm definitely enthused. Does that not remind you of the, the old days playing it in the office? Just hearing this. Now that I've heard you fingering, I'm, I'm definitely enthused. Not for the last time. Anyway. <laughs> Let's get out of here. There's places to be, people to see. Chris has children to rescue, so we yeah, might as well let Just the one, but it might as well be multiple <laughs> for the noise she makes. <laughs> Andy, what we got going on this week, apart from that VGC5 article, which you should definitely check out, is very cool. We have done some amazing things. All the coolest games people have been on VGC. It's the results week next week, isn't it? So that'll be Whoa! a nice, um, that'll be a, a nice, uh, a, a nice dessert sort of bank holiday weekend. Wait, Tom um, Ivan's fucking screaming with excitement at results. Nice, Tom uh, Ivan's well, he, he for some of it, mate, because he doesn't bloody do him. Yeah, uh, he's he'll be up at six a.m. Um, doing Nintendo. Uh, mm. Yeah, so that that'll be fun. I, I I find quite, especially now that it's just dead. Um, yeah, I this is proper stuff, right? Yeah, this is if companies could, and again, it's not for us; it's their shareholders. They wouldn't even give you these numbers, right? It's nice <laughs> in 2024 to have a little bit of transparency again. Here's yeah. some sales. Here's how much money we make. And you can be a journalist and dig through them, right? It's it's a little treat. Here's you an know, old yeah. Japanese man saying VGC is a liar. They weren't showing Switch to it. You know, came on. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, 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 wait, it's, um, <laughs> one of our greatest uh, moments was um, the during the Wii U era. And you can hear the audio. So I'm not going to do the impression. But um, Satoru Iwata um, said uh, in uh, one of their, um, their their financial results that um, he said uh, uh, the UK publication CVG can be quite severe in their nice. uh, in their coverage. However, they recommended uh, Wii U as the best console to buy this Christmas. And he was right. God rest them. God rest them. Right. Man. Anyway, I better go and get my child. So we need more up. Awata and less Chris Scullion. Until next week, thank you for watching, <laughs> listening, reviewing on Apple Podcasts. We will see you soon. Say goodbye, Chris. Goodbye, Chris. Say goodbye, Andy. Goodbye. And we'll see you next week. <laughs>